to the Body Smart Book Club. Um, this week we're going over Chapter Five of Mark Sisson's Primal Endurance. Did I say that right? Yes, I did. Primal yes. Endurance. Right. Um, and so this one is on strength training. So this is a, a chapter that we we're all really excited about. Um, we all just get super excited about strength yeah, training. I guess this is a chapter um, we've been waiting for. Yes, yes. <laughs> super, super important topic, um, and and one that is especially super important topic uh, among run, runners. We'll kind of get to. Um, that philosophy later in the episode and, and kind of some of the, the myths and misconceptions that runners have about strength training. Um, but first, let's let's dive right in and, and talk about the idea of, of building body awareness um, and how strength training kind of funnels into that. And we, we just got finished talking a lot about this here. But what, what we are saying about body awareness is what what is the difference between an amateur athlete and an elite athlete and we all decided that it's the relationship that an athlete has with their body and a more elite athlete you know through years of practice and training and just learn learning to communicate with their body they they just kind of figure out um you know what where am I feeling this? How do I need to move this part of my body? And they also develop skills on how to move their body correctly. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And they're aware of like where they're wanting to go with improvements because there's always improvements mm-hmm. can be made with your body awareness, um, whether that come from like your running form or your lifting form. Um, and for me, that's like my first step, I guess, to progressing in that is being aware of like where you are and where you should be. Yeah. So I love that point. Um, and I think that's really important when we're looking at training from an endurance perspective or strength training, right? Both of them together is setting where do I want to go? Um, because I think if we're just doing a workout to do a workout, it's easy to kind of meander around and we don't ever get the maximum benefits of, of either type of workout. And so setting where we want to go, right? This is where we want to be. This is our goal. Um, I think helps us make those choices and, and helps us learn to listen to our body along the way. Um, for sure. And it's not something that a coach can teach you or a YouTube video can teach you. Developing body awareness is really about spending time with your body just just by running more and by doing the right exercises. And I think yoga is amazing. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great way to practice moving your body and just being aware. So, again, it just it just takes time with your body so you can develop that relationship with it yeah and that's just kind of what we talked about uh, about earlier right like the reason that we're able to get together and, and, and talk and have these conversations is that we have spent time together building that relationship and so i think really when we're looking at building our body and and, and learning to feel our body and understand our body we have to spend time with it and that happens when we're doing workouts right when we're doing that endurance workout when we're lifting weights and we're, we're you know feeling how that movement works whatever the whatever the form is or the pattern we're spending time with our body and i think what happens is so often we spend too little time with our body because when we're active and we're moving around we are you know um maybe we're talking with a, a group of friends as we hike which isn't a bad thing right like that's the social component is, is important but we don't get to spend time with our body or we're in a stressful day job and we don't get time with our body and we go home and we eat a bunch of food and then we sit and watch Netflix and we don't spend time with our body. And so in neglecting that relationship, we really do ourselves a disservice um, because I think when we really understand um, our body, we know when enough is enough, right? When I can push myself a little bit more, when I can get some more out of this workout or when maybe this is this is just too much, there's been too much in the day, there's a lot of other factors uh, you know, going into that and I need to take a break from, from my workout and, and to be able to understand that and feel okay about that. So I, I love the points that we've hit with that. That's, yeah, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was just gonna say that when we're aware of like where we're gonna be, um, where we are now, um, I don't want to be thinking about like what I should be doing different 24 seven during my run either. Um, right. You brought up the point that, you know, sometimes we're not actually aware of what we're doing when we're with groups and things like that. But you don't wanna be fully dialed into the opposite side either where the whole time when you're running, you're thinking, okay, arms at a right angle, uh, <laughs> faster cadence, landing on my forefoot as opposed to my heel, um, all these different cues that they're there. Um, my take is that when you're aiming to do those kind of things, you should be doing it um, gradually and through the progression of yourself as an athlete. Um, and so you say, you know, 
the difference between an amateur and elite is being aware of your body and uh, the movements that you're making. Um, a lot of that comes from the strength training and the different training methods that help adapt your body to be able to move in a more efficient way. Because our bodies naturally move in the most efficient way they can. But that doesn't mean it's the most efficient way for a human being in general. Because um, everyone has different muscles, different uh, um, strengths in different areas. And so... Um, even though we're moving at our most efficient way, it doesn't mean we can move closer and closer to what the most efficient way to move as a human being is. Um, and so I like to do that by, you know, incorporating form drills after runs or doing certain lifting exercises that are strengthening muscles that will um, help build the strength to be able to move in that more efficient way as opposed to the entire run just thinking, okay, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. Um, and that way it's, you know, it's more enjoyable um, and you're making strength um, progression as well, aside from just the if running efficiency. Yeah. I love that. You both made me think of a couple different things. Mark, you mentioned, um, you know, you had a really stressful day at work and you're not thinking about your body. And I thought about how there's probably most of us, you know, a lot of us have desk jobs where our shoulders are so tight and tense. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a massage therapist. So most, I would say 90% of the time people are like, you know, I'm like, what do you want to work on? And they're like, my shoulders, get my shoulders. <laughs> because all day. yeah, like how many of you have like realized like, like, whoa, like I ain't got to relax. Like it's that body awareness. And, and, you know, and then you said you go home and, and you watch Netflix. Are you just like slouching on the couch eating your nachos or are you like yeah. thinking about your posture? Nachos. I'm thinking about nachos. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at. <laughs> it's funny you bring that up too. Cause literally right before you said that, you know, you're self-conscious when you're on camera and I was thinking like, okay, I think I need to sit up straight. I need to like, my shoulders are tight. Where's the book on my and head? So there I was literally like doing the exact same thing as you brought that up. So I think I, I like slouching. <laughs> With you, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just it's it's just that awareness throughout the day too of you know checking your posture and making sure you're not you're not super tense. So and then and then like you said, Preston, um, when you're on the trail with your friends and you're walking, having a good time, you don't want your friends to be like, "Hello, what are you doing?" And you're like, "I'm I'm trying to land on my <laughs> on like my heels right now." <laughs> <laughs> not even in the conversation. Yeah. Like, be with your friends, enjoy those moments because. Mm -hmm. Like, like you said, you don't want to be obsessed with yeah. that all the time. Yeah, those ad adaptations helpful. come over time right. and through strength training and drills and even more boring than some of those. Um, sometimes I'll <laughs> listen to a metronome while I run, um, uh, which <laughs> is not fun, but uh, it helps improve your cadence. Um, yeah. and instead of having the internal cues just thinking about it all the time, um, you kind of naturally sync up to the, the sound of the metronome when you're running. Um, and so if you're trying to uh, increase your cadence, that's a way that I've done that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a quick tip just with what, what Preston said, right? There's Spotify now has it and, there, and there's different apps that you can um, find music that matches different running cadences. So instead of like dying from a metronome like I would, um, <laughs> you, can, you can change it up, right? I, I think there's definitely some benefit from, from being able to find a couple of different ways to do yeah. that. So tip of the day. And don't do it all the time either. Yes, um, yes. Just do it maybe, you know, like once or twice a week. The other times, go out and enjoy your run. And I think over time, naturally, those runs where you're not listening to that 180 beats a minute or whatever it is you're working on cadence-wise um, may not always be at 180. Um, will naturally change as you go as well when you're not listening to it. Do you ever yeah. find yourself when you're running, like, going... Not really, but I do get to a point where... Um, I feel like it puts me in a trance when I'm listening to it. It's almost like the hard workouts become like, this just like metronome, like my body just does it because like, here's yeah. this noise and it knows like, okay, this is what I have to be doing right now because the metronome's going. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Condition That's response, funny. right? Yeah. yeah. That's hilarious. Um, so diving more into the, the strength training side of things, I want to pull out a point of something that you said, um, and, and this relates to uh, performance in general, right? So strengthening those muscles and the patterns that we're going to use in our sport, whatever that is, right? Whether it's running or basketball or soccer or anything, we want to develop those muscles um, that are going to best match the patterns that we exhibit when we're in that, uh, in that sport. Um, and that just adds so much to, to our performance and our ability to, um, to, to move and to 
have power when, when, when we're moving. And that just can be accomplished without strength training and not just strength training, but the top proper type of strength training, um, because there's obviously multiple different ways uh, to go, go about it. Um, right from that kind of high load, low rep to low, ro low load, high rep and kind of everything in between. So, you know, with that in mind, I, I guess how, um, how is, how have some of those ideas influenced your training as, uh, in terms of strength as a runner? Yeah. Um, I guess I kind of want to hit the progression of my train of thought with, with strength training and lifting, um, to answer that question. So, especially like when I started out with lifting, I had some typical misconceptions that a lot of runners have, um, about strength training. And so, you know, I was worried about things like bulking up or, um, doing lots of reps instead of a lot of weight, um, those kind of things. It's typical for runners to feel that way because obviously being extremely bulked up or, or heavier um, decreases your running efficiency. Um, and so that was one thing that was super on my mind. And so I would always just do exercises with a bare amount of weight and just do as many reps as I possibly could. Um, but the problem with that that I found and that I've seen even more within research that I've studied over the past few years is that you're training the same energy system you're training when you're running. Um, and when you're running, um, you're always using a ratio of all of your energy pathways, but obviously your most utilized one is going to be with using oxygen as your main source and, uh, um, burning carbohydrates and fat. Um, so when you're lifting, if you're doing a lot of reps and low weight, you're going to be doing that exact same thing. You know, it's essentially running in the book. He actually says, you know, if you're going to be doing that, you might as well just go out and do a six mile run. Cause it's the same thing. You're doing tons of reps of the exact same movement, um, at a very light weight. Um, and so our goal with strength training, at least when I, um, approach that and that I've seen his, um, opinion in this book is that we should be hitting lots of weight. Um, so we're increasing our explosive powers, increasing our strength, allowing us to be able to run faster, being more efficient, um, and decreasing our risk of injury. Definitely. So one thing that we talk about a lot, um, is the idea behind like why, why injuries occur, right? And at it, its base level, basically all injuries occur as a result of overload. Um, and so again, going back to the point, if we're just doing the same thing, the same pattern, running and running and running, um, and that's how we got our injury, doing more of that isn't gonna prevent future injuries. And so I think the idea, right? Like training those systems and having, way, like building up a functional reserve, right? So we have that power, we have that strength beyond what we need in our typical daily runs, um, our typical endurance exercises, so that we're not overloading the tissues, right? That we've trained them to, to function in a much broader range, right? A higher envelope of function. Um, and that way we, we can see, in, you know, reduced injury risk with also the benefits of, yeah, the, that explosive power, right? That end of the race, and I can just gun it um, because I've trained my muscles to, to develop that power response. For sure, for sure. I actually was talking to an elite runner the other day, I won't say who, and he he's running over a hundred miles a week and and he's like, and every year I get injured and I don't know why. He's like, you know, one year this happened and one year this happened and one year this happened. And the first question I asked him was, well, do you do, you do any lifting? Do you do any strength training? And he like looked at me like, why would you even ask me that? And he was like, no. And I was like, well, hello. <laughs> You're running a hundred miles a week without any kind of strength training. Of course, you're gonna get, of course, you're gonna get injured because when you're running, it's this, you know, this repetitive same motion over and over again. You're using the same muscles all the time. You need to mix it up and strengthen those other muscles that you're neglecting when you're running, or injuries will happen. Yeah, yeah, it's inevitable. Yeah, and when you're doing that, one of the points that I want to hit is the uh, increased strength in your bones and tendons. Mm -hmm. um, as far as decreasing injury, um, when you're lifting, you're not always going to bulk up. A lot of times it's, you know, creating a more dense fiber or a more dense bone that's going to be able to withstand more, more forces on it. So, um, if you're lifting and you're able to put that extra stress onto, let's say your Achilles tendon, um, you're going to be able to hold that same load when you're running. Um, and likewise with the bones. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about in a previous episode, right? Like having the, um, having the body of a, of a runner, but having the, the bones of a basketball player or a football player, right? Having, you know, building that up. 
Um, and uh, again, when you look at training for bone and tendon stiffness, what they need is that higher load, um, but also lower reps. So um, the the way that Rich Willie talked about it, so he's a PhD PT out of uh, out of Montana, and we've we brought him up on the show before. Um, but he talked about after about 10 to 20 repetitions of an exercise, our bones and our tendons get, get bored, right? And so while from a, from a hypertrophy uh, perspective, yeah, you can get more to, to continue with those reps, but we need relatively few reps to, to really uh, strengthen those bones and tendons, which again, like you pointed out, ends up being really important for um, long-term health. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and aside from the uh, decreased injury risk that comes with the strength training as well. There's also an increased um, performance with it. Um, when you think about lifting, a lot of the times, especially when you're doing high weight, um, you're more training that explosive power. Uh, when relating that to running terms, that's more like you're sprinting as opposed to your you know marathon pace. Um, and the way that that's going to increase your marathon pace, even though we're mainly working on you know that sprint speed. Um, it's going to create a higher ceiling for us to improve. So if you're thinking about, you know, your sprint speed, max sprint speed being like right here, and your marathon pace is right here. Um, the closer you get to that sprint speed with your marathon pace, the harder it's going to be to improve. Um, and so what we're goal is to do is to raise that sprint speed so we have more room to grow. And thus, you know, we can run faster at the same percentage of our max effort um, with um, less work. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think that's an awesome way to put it. Um, Mark Sisson also says in his book that by lifting heavy with lower uh, with lower reps, so you're putting your body under a similar load as you face when you have ran for multiple hours and kind of already um, touched on this, but it made me think of, I, th- I think I shared this in the, like an 80-20 episode, but I just thought it was so cool. It was such an, an aha moment for me because um, my husband and I tried to follow this um, concept that Mark Sisson talks about of the eight weeks of aerobic build and then you start doing your high intensity. So that's what we did. We went eight weeks without any sprinting and we never saw our times drop. Uh, we built up um, you know, time on our feet and miles. And then after our eight weeks, we started doing high intensity. And just in two weeks of doing sprinting and uh, a little bit of lifting, I just felt a, a complete change in my body. So we did a, a 26 mile run um, with about 4,000 feet of climbing. And on the way back, we had ran about um, 20 miles at this point and we were on this part where we were just hitting you know a hill and then a drop and a hill and then a drop and usually like 20 miles in we hit these hills like I'm just going to be dying but I remember hitting these hills at 20 miles and me able to just fly up these hills and my husband's like what's going on and I was like I don't know <laughs> what did you <laughs> eat <laughs> I was like I have a new superpower like yeah. it was amazing and I just yeah. I probably pushed myself too hard but I was so excited that I could just bust up these hills that every time I hit a hill I was like here we go and I just boom yeah. <laughs> that's such a good so, feeling I oh love it's amazing yeah. right like have you experienced mm-hmm. that like where did this like like power Definitely. come from it's like, like the runner's high to the max you know yeah, you just go for it. it so is um, and when we're saying like sprint training we're not talking like um big structured workouts a lot of the times you know one of my main sources of sprint training is just going to be after a distance run um doing a few strides or like uh basically just picking up the pace for 10 to 20 seconds mm-hmm. um and that's going to be sufficient enough to, you know to not only mix up your body me- uh, biomechanics um but it's also going to give you that sprint training and be able to you know improve that top end speed that you have exactly exactly so lift weights guys yeah. do yeah. it <laughs> Well, I think that's the thing that we find, uh, you know, in talking to multiple runners, right? Getting that strength workout added in sometimes makes all the difference. And I think for a lot of people, it's like, oh, what what have I been missing all these years? Um, Because, yeah, I mean, from again, from all these perspectives that we talked about, from performance, from uh, injury risk, right? From being able to handle the the different amounts of load and still feel good. Strength training is awesome um, and, and, and super important. One point that we should make with that, I think, though, mm-hmm. is before you go and just kill it with the heavy weights, is is understanding, uh, going back to understanding the, the purpose of each lift and, and developing those proper patterns to begin with, right? The good form, the good lifting technique, um, so that you don't just go, oh, man, they told me to lift like, like a bunch of weight. I'm going to go in there and rock it. And oh, my gosh, I can't walk now. Um, 
you know, we, it was funny. We were talking about some um, experiences that we had with with form. Um, I remember this kid in my high school, which apparently this must have been a significant event in my life, right? I still don't remember. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I don't. I don't remember his name, um, unfortunately. But just uh, just this like scrappy dude, and uh, and we're doing like we're in PE, and we're doing like whatever. I don't know if it was the presidential fitness test or something, right? And there was a push up competition in there. And, uh, and he's like cranking them out. He ends up winning. And it was so annoying. Cause I, yeah, like I was just, you know, I felt like we were all working hard and then he was just like, right? his arms were moving like one millimeter. And I was like, fair enough. Right. So, so obviously, um, kind of did funny. He, win? he did win. He yeah. did win. I know. I was watching well, anyone's form. And no. you're over here doing the right form, yes, right? Yes. I was doing such good you form. And I definitely did get the most push-ups anyway. <laughs> I still don't have one, but my goodness, my form was great. Um, yeah. yeah, when you were talking about, okay, you should tell the yeah. story about. Um, I definitely had a very similar experience to that when I was competing in college uh, as a track athlete. Uh, I had a teammate, she was a girl on the uh, cross country team and very typical, you know, distance runner build, you know, really skinny, uh, really lean. Um, she was maybe like five one, five two, maybe a hundred pounds. Um, and I had just come off a cross training kind of block. Um, I was having some different injury issues. And, uh, so I'd been doing a lot of strength training with that. Um, and so I consider myself to be, you know, fairly strong, um, across, <laughs> you know, all my muscle groups and, um, especially, you know, compared to a typical distance runner. Um, at that level. And uh, so one day she comes up to me in the gym and she's like, you know what? I bet I could do more push-ups than you. Let's do a competition. Let's see who can do the most push-ups in one minute. And in my mind, I'm like, all right, like I'll, I'll play this out. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, She seems it's really confident bad. going into this. And, you know, I'm, I'm not tall, but you know, I'm like 5'10 and she's like this little <laughs> tiny girl. And, um, <laughs> Uh, it was just all good fun. And so we get started and um, start timer, start doing push-ups. You know, I'm going all the way to the ground and I feel like I'm just flying. Like I'm doing so many push-ups and it's like the strongest I've ever been. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I like I got this in the towards mind. like the end of the minute, like I look up and see what she's doing and she's like, they're like arms fully extended, just like bobbing her head up and down like, really fast. Like it was, it was seriously like a neck workout. <laughs> the gym push-up um, Olympics. And then, uh, I didn't want to burst her bubble. Um, I just kind of let her have it. And at the end, I was like, yeah, I did X amount of push-ups. He's like, oh, I did like 75 in one minute. I was like, that's more than one minute, one push-up a second. Um, you are so efficient. And, yeah, in my head, I was just like, man, like, how do you not have like a concussion or like some kind of like, uh, yeah. that? like that's so fast moving head back and forth for such a long time. Um, oh, seriously. But anyway, there's a huge difference between, uh, you know, um, having Bob correct form and, and going all the way down. Yeah, having that body awareness that we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm sure we, we all have seen, you know, these gym goers who are like lifting or like, you know, the bench mm -hmm. press or deadlift and, and you're just like, else. what? <laughs> yeah, you just want to go correct their form, right? Yeah, no, I remember this one guy like I used to lift with his lips like pushed out. I don't know if he thought like that to help him get more, but like <laughs> his head's bobbing. All right, you do your thing, man. You, you do, do your, your thing. If that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so bringing it back together, though, um, just again focusing on on quality in the form of, of strength training and really learning those lifts. Because if we do that, right, we end up getting the maximum benefit to those muscles, right? We're going through the whole range of motion and working them in the way that they need to be. Um, but we're also uh, challenging them appropriately and hopefully developing good motor control patterns um, while we're doing that, that translates to um, to how we end up uh, moving and, and going on a run. Right, and, and I just wanna add, I don't want to discourage anyone from going to the gym. If, I mean, even if you're not doing correct form, I mean, work on it you should work on it but also way to get to the gym and move i don't yeah. know i don't i don't just go to the gym and like you're all doing it wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you and you and you way, way to get to the gym yeah That's i mean like, working out is like more yeah. or less like part of my job and i know when i go to the gym um there's some exercises that i just have terrible form on um and you know like we mentioned you know the important thing is just to know where you are having your shortcomings and how you can fix them because um, no one's perfect um, and I guarantee even if you see you know that guy over there crushing it with his lips stuck out you know <laughs> lifting his weights um, he has some exercises too 
that uh, he isn't quite perfect at either. Um, and everyone has to start somewhere. Um, and so people relate to that, you know, if they see you struggling with certain thing, you know, we've all gone through that, whether you're an expert or whether you're just starting out. Um, and so don't let that be a factor that's gonna stop you from working out. For sure. For sure. Definitely. You know, I mean, I think that's what we, at the end of the day, what we want to encourage everyone to do is to, to get out there to exercise and to, to get fit and do something more than, than you're doing today, right? I think mm -hmm. that was great how you put it. Um, we each have weaknesses, um, but there's ways that all of us can improve. Um, and I think having, you know, good sources of support around us to, to help us make those improvements and to encourage us along the way, um, to advocate for us, but also to hold us accountable. Um, ends up going a long way to helping us perform better in, in the long run and becoming, um, again, like we always talk about, right? Becoming better athletes and, and better humans along the way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really, really fun stuff. We, again, we love that chapter. It was super yeah. fun to dive into. Um, definitely recommend this book to, to all of you. I think it has some really great points and, and it's definitely helped us think about, um, uh, multiple aspects of training from a different perspective, which is always a great way to, to learn, you know, to, to ask more questions um, is, is a great way to, to get on the way to learning. So uh, thanks for joining us today and we'll catch you next time. That's the educated ways person of saying ghosts. <laughs> <laughs>